Hey guys, I wanted to shoot a quick video on how to install Ammo Reflex Pro. And the reason I say quick is it's really not that complicated, but I wanted to do it on a real car. I Meaning this is a Porsche 964 and it's a customer car. They're coming out at the end of the day. I kind of wanted to show you in real life what's going on. So we're gonna go through that step-by-step -step process. At the end of that, we're gonna have a little Q&A section where a lot of you have asked a ton of questions in the pre-sale about everything from how long does it last? How do you prep for it? Can you polish it? Uh, how does it compare? What's the white stuff on the, everything in between. So we're gonna go through that, but I'll give you a little bit of a warning it's going to be technical towards the end i'm going to read some quotes from a phd chemist uh, to sort of get us all on the same page so we can understand where this sits and sort of the spectrum of everything coatings because i know there's a ton of confusion out there so let's get in uh, let's prep this car and i'll show you the steps and then we'll go through the questions the all-new ammo reflex pro can be applied to paint trim headlights door jams wheels painted interior plastics, and boats. It's simple and quick, no heat lamps or tools needed. And as you'll see in all my videos, and especially in today's world, wearing gloves, mask, and face protection when washing or polishing or protecting your car is a very smart way to go. First, wash the paint to remove any contaminants as you would for any layer of protection. Because this has very low viscosity, it also flows into the peaks and valleys of the paint really well. So to take advantage of that characteristic, the paint and the wheels need to be as clean as possible. So what I like to do is use Ammo Brute mixed with Dawn dish soap or whatever you have on your counter to help break up or emulsify any oils or old waxes that may be on your paint and wheels. Keep in mind, if you need to clay the paint, then do so now after the wash using the paint soap as lubrication. If not, just skip it. Once your wash is done, don't forget the door jams by the way, rinse the car down again, then dry with a microfiber towel without hydrate and use air or a blower if you have access to one. Now at this point, you can do two things. You can either wipe with an isopropyl alcohol or gentle wax and grease remover if you feel the surface is not clean enough, or you can go the other direction, which is to polish the paint because you need to remove imperfections prior to applying Ammo Reflex Pro. Now in this particular case, you can see that the 964 has a bunch of scratches, so obviously I need to compound, polish them out to make it look perfect before I put Pro on top of it. So I wanna make the point loud and clear. Not all cars will need to be polished or even clayed. So you need to use your judgment here. So you can move on quickly and just put on pro, or you can do some prep work. It really depends on the level of detail that you're looking for and the condition of the vehicle that you're working on. With the car clean, dry, and with your PPE gear on, shake the bottle, then apply a few drops to the microfiber applicator pad, but there's no need to actually soak it. Just a few drops and you're good to go. Then immediately afterwards, lightly screw the cap back on to prolong the shelf life of the leftover product inside the bottle for future jobs as each bottle will get you about two to three applications, including the wheels and the door jams. Once primed, work in overlapping motions one panel at a time and allow it to set up for about 20 to 30 seconds in most cases and sometimes longer in others. This will differ based on the temperature and humidity, of course, but it's easy. Just watch for the panel to begin to rainbow, then it's time to wipe it off. As I'm sure you all know by now, quality resin-based protection will become somewhat sticky during the removal process. It's perfectly normal and will become smooth once it's fully cured in a few hours. Work the entire vehicle one panel at a time and make sure you rotate your towels. Once the paint is covered, then I work the door jams, especially underneath the doors themselves, as this is where dirt and grime can sit for long periods of time. And don't forget about the backside of the gas door, the hood and trunk jams, and finish up with the wheels as well. If you happen to miss a buff off spot, same idea as when you're putting on wax or sealant, and a little part of it actually cures in a tiny little spot, that's totally fine. Simply re-wipe that area with fresh reflex and then buff it off with a microfiber towel again, and it'll come off really easily. Once you've completed all the panels, which should take you about 45 minutes, maybe an hour or so, allow it to set up for at least six hours before getting the surface wet. If you can let it sit for 12 hours or 24, that's even better. But most important step by far is to double check all of your work for missed spots and address them within the first few hours, and then you're good to go.
Okay, now we're in the Q&A portion of the video, and as you can see, the 964 behind me looks absolutely stunning. It took me about an hour, and I was filming, so I had to move the camera around, meaning I was a little bit slower. So let's, for argument's sake, say we took about an hour. Uh, we did one panel at a time, wiped it off. It's really not that big of a deal, uh, but let's go through the Q&A. I'm giving you a little bit of a heads up. We're gonna start talking a little bit more about chemistry. I'm gonna stay high level. I wanted to give very specific answers, which was gonna require me to read an iPad, because I have a ton of questions from you guys, as well as I have pieces of paper all around me right now uh, from chemists and various um, people who are giving advice and uh, opinions on certain aspects uh, like surface tension and surface energy and additives and things along those that nature, as well as I'm going to have a link down below. We're going to talk about it in a second. This is from the Industrial Microbiology Services uh, a Certificate of Analysis when we talk about the additive that's in there, meaning I just didn't wanna say, hey, we have micro antimicrobial uh, additive in there. I wanted to actually prove that we did some tests so it's not just a, sort of a buzzword there. But uh, so bear with me here. We're gonna blast through a couple of different uh, questions and hopefully uh, it answers your question. If not, of course, shoot me an email. I'm happy to help. First one is how long does it last? The quick answer is we've done field tests that have lasted between 29 and about 30, a little bit over 36 months. So basically two and a half to three years. Now the big question is, why did you say one year? That's what people get. Why do you keep saying one year, one year? And I say, if you're not maintaining your car uh, for at least one year, meaning you're not touching it for one year, there is a kind of a divide between who I'm focused on meeting my customer or the, the people that I really want to try to help versus others. And it, you're, you can't be everything to everybody. And so I use that uh, because I think if people are scared away by one year, when in reality it's two and a half years, but let's just say, and you people watching, I think uh, you guys are you know that fanatical type people where it doesn't really matter, but for the majority of the public, they wanna hear five years, seven years, and there's a 20 year warranty and all these kind of crazy things, which I respect. I'm not uh, knocking anybody, that's not what I do. Um, it's just not what I believe in. And it, it, to me, I wanna focus, if you're not maintaining your car at least once a year, which I think is un incredibly reasonable, then it may not be a right fit. So uh, that's sort of where I'm at with there, but publicly I'm gonna say uh, one year because I do think you need to reapply uh, after one year and you just avoid tons of issues. Like, because one of the questions is how do you know when to reapply it? And my answer to that is, I guess we'll do it right now, is every year because you're never gonna let it get to that point where you're gonna see it starting to fade or certain areas get more damaged than others and things like that. So once, uh, once a year, I think is very reasonable. Okay, the next question is, what makes this different than the uh, original Reflex uh, and the Reflex sheet code? So uh, there's another question here, why did you name it Reflex 2? So we'll talk about that. But basically I had the original Reflex, here are my props. This is the original one, my very first bottle. You can see it's all mangled. And this one here, which is double the size, by the way. Um, and then there's the one in between, which is the Reflex sheet coat. Now the original Reflex, number one selling product I ever had. People loved it, it's fantastic. But at the time I was ignorant uh, as to what uh, my, my personal values were with respect to the safety of the product. I always wanted it to be safe, uh, but I didn't really set a guideline for myself. And because uh, you're looking at the only guy in the company right now, uh, I, it's, I'm privileged to be able to set the guideline and, and make the rules as I see it. Uh, and at that time when I set the rules, uh, I had to make <laughs> a very uh, challenging decision for myself because it was the number one selling product uh, to take it off the market because it didn't meet my standards. One of, there's multiple standards, but one of which was being uh, non-flammable. And in this case, that was flammable back then, uh, like anything else changes. So uh, I would say the difference is in this case, I'm gonna read off this to make sure that we're very, very clear. It's non-flammable, it's organic, as in it means it has a carbon backbone. We can talk about that in a little bit. It lasts way longer than anything else, uh, the original, the sheet coat, and then uh, this one. They're, it's sort of like comparing apples to rocket ships. It's not even remotely close. Uh, there's a high, what we call a high bond dissociation, and that is another way of saying a, a very high melting point. So when you have bonds between two different monomers, let's call them making a polymer, uh, of a particular uh, product. Let's just say that there's a line in between the two of them and UV sun or UV rays hits it like the sun. So these things wiggle. Oh, and if you're using uh, carnauba wax in this weird example, oh, carnauba wax, it'll break apart, right? In this case, this bond between the two of them is very high, but we'll talk about it a little bit later. Um, not so high that it doesn't allow the paint um, to flex. It is flexible, which I just talked about. It can be put on boats. Uh, I have never really crossed into that boat market and I wanted to focus on uh, boats as well as this. The big one was the antimicrobial additive. 
at the end of this uh, quick conversation, hopefully, uh, we're gonna be talking about additives and what that means across the industry. Or, or people are, are now putting things like, uh, for instance, graphene into a product, but I do believe there's a bit of confusion as to what an additive is versus not. And in this case, if I have antimicrobial in here, this isn't an antimicrobial coating. It's a coating with an antimicrobial additive. Uh, looking at this uh, through the same microscope, this isn't a graphene coating. It's a coating with a graphene additive to it. So we're gonna talk about that in a second, but that's, I'm just teasing you a little bit here to kind of get uh, this in your head that these are additives, meaning all the things, that, the attributes that I just talked about, whether I remove that antimicrobial additive or not, it's still gonna do the same thing. I just added an antimicrobial, which is the next question, so I guess I'll get into it, because I think morally, and again, philosophically, I wanna to try to be pushing towards the thing that we're fighting on a global basis. Now, this isn't like a Mother Teresa type moment, but like, why would I not wanna fight that? Because somebody said in a Facebook post, why would you put antimicrobial, like who cares about that? And I said, great. I do. Here's why. Because I touch my door handle every 10 seconds getting in and out of the car. Inside, there's painted plastic, certain areas of, of certain cars. You can actually put that on because you're opening and closing the door, that kind of thing. And I'll, I'll read a statement that has been certified. Again, the certified analysis. I'll have a, a certificate of analysis. I'll have this link so you can uh, look at it on a PDF or whatever. But basically, staff and E. coli is, is uh, reduced by 99.9% .9 over a 24 hour period. I can read you the actual legal statement, but you get the idea. I wanted to push in the right direction. Is it gonna solve all the world's problems? No, but I thought, hey, why don't we just keep pushing that way versus, hey, this makes it even more hydrophobic. This makes it even more stronger. It makes it even like a, uh, like a tank. And the example that I give on the phone to uh, different people is like, why would you not want it stronger? And it's like, okay, we've talked about at nauseum the flexing of the paint, meaning if I take this car that I just did and put it outside, it's gonna heat up the paint. And if I bring it back inside and it's cool, it's gonna contract. And when we polish it, it heats up and it cools down. There's no arguments there, we've talked about it a lot. If you're gonna put something on top of that, that is a piece of glass that is steel, and underneath is like a balloon that's going like this, eventually, it's gonna go like this. We, we've shown that it, it, it cracks, it fissures, it has these um, displa displacements in, the, in the, the, the surface. So to me, I don't necessarily want something that's super strong. I'll give you one of my analogies again. Let's say you're a police officer in modern times, meaning today, and you were wearing an old school like knight's uniform, you know, and, and you can barely walk in it, but like hypothetically you couldn't get shot or you couldn't get hit and you'd always be protected and you'd always come home safe, great. But you wouldn't be able to really, it's not practical, meaning you couldn't run after the bad guy. You couldn't jump over a, a fence or something like that, right? So you can't always have everything that's the strongest. So there has to be this kind of happy medium. And that's the part where uh, it gets confusing and there's a lot of marketing and it just, it, it, I get a lot of questions like that. So hopefully, um, I think I just ruined like three or four answers here because I just blended them all. But that's basically what's kind of going on in my head. Next question, why did you use the same name as Reflex? It's kind of a weird, funny story, but uh, my wife and I came up with the name. And the reason why is we wanted something that was flexible uh, and reflective. So reflective, re-flexible, reflex. reflex. Um, I just think it was, it's the next evolution and I love being able to evolve and maybe there's going to be the next one or the next one, who knows, but, uh, so that's why it's named Reflex. Next question, do I have to strip the paint before application? Uh, I think strip is a very, uh, uh, wrong word to use, but I get what we're doing. In the detailing industry, we say strip to remove all the oils and anything that's on top of the surface. The short answer is yes, but we have to be conscious about how we do that. So use dish soap, uh, use Brute. Um, you can use a little bit of ISO here and there, and wipe it down, but the challenge is I have a video on this. You don't want to shock the paint. And when you shock the paint, you're using heavy wax removers and degreasers and things. So we, some paints are fine and some are not. So I'm saying, hey, you guys got to take your time and think about what, I don't know your car, so you may have to do some tests. Here's the downside. If you shock the paint, meaning you expand and contract, expand and contract, expand and contract too fast, those layers sometimes get disjointed and don't go back properly and you cause issues in the paint. We've talked about that with Kevin Brown a thousand times. So the short answer is yes, you want to remove 
uh, because the surface of the paint, even after we've polished this one, is still jagged. Like if we were to put a microscope on it, it's still kind of like this, but jagged. And so because this, this product here is low vis, uh, has a low viscosity, in other words, it's thin, it'll seep in and coat everything and it, it forms this covalent bond with the surface. Great, sounds all technical and sexy, but if that is filled in with wax or junk or something or dirt or whatever, it's not gonna bond right. It's just like doing the epoxy floor here. We gotta sand it down and wipe it like a thousand times or doing or painting a car. Same kind of concept or the short answer is, Yes, but do it safely. Okay, do I need to polish the car beforehand? Uh, the quick answer to that is if it's um, not in the condition that you want it to stay in, then yes, you should polish it. If it's a brand new car and it looks perfect, no, then you don't need to. I'm not of the philosophy where um, I'm gonna use it as makeup. It does have a little bit of those qualities, so, but I don't like to promote that because I don't believe that that's the right way, but by default, meaning it is going to fill in a lot of those gaps and reduce a little bit of those um, light scratches, but that's not something I promote because I don't want, that's not what I believe in. But yes, uh, I do think you should polish it beforehand, but if you don't, it doesn't mean it, don't do it. Can I apply two layers? Yes, you can. You just need to allow it to cure for a certain amount of time, usually six to 12 hours. But what I generally say in the public, just to cover everybody from, you know, Australia to Russia in terms of the humidity and barometer, all that kind of thing, give it 24 hours and you can put another coating on there. Yeah, no problem. Uh, and there's certainly enough product in there. Uh, yeah, certain enough product. Uh, you can get a couple of cars done. I did uh, just the, you know, this one you watched, I have about um, 60% like the, the labels in the way, so I can't show you, but it's about 60% left. So I could probably do another car and a half of this, but I also did the door jams. I did the, um, the wheels. I did, uh, the hood jam, the trunk jam. So I, I really went nuts on this car. So, and there's still 60% left. Uh, so you can, you definitely have your next application as well. It lasts about, about a year unopened. And then once it's opened, it's hard for me to give you, that's another question here. It's hard for me to give you a, a definitive time because it depends on how much air goes into it because it's the cure is air. Uh, so uh, as I showed you in the application video, I, I apply it on, I just barely a little bit. You don't really need a whole lot. It goes forever. Um, you don't want to put it on too thick either. Uh, I just close it up real quick and put it in my pocket. Put it on, dot, 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 close it up real quick and then you can go and do your thing and put it down, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, somebody also asked me about towels. If you wash your towels once you're done, microfiber towels, you, they won't harden up. But if you wipe all that down and leave it there, yeah, it's gonna turn hard because it's a product that turns hard. Same with your applicator. Once you're done with it, throw Should it Should I do the entire card before wiping down? No, you wanna do one panel at a time. Watch for it to flash. It, it's very hard to catch it on camera. It took a lot of work to get that. But in person, it's like very evident. It's very obvious that it is uh, turning and then wipe it down. And if it starts to become too, too grippy, that means you need to adjust your time and work a little bit, uh, you know, wipe it down a little bit faster, but it really gives you a decent amount of time. So you shouldn't have any trouble. Can you put it on PPF? Yes, that is a perfect example back there. Uh, as you know, the, the Ammo 964 is completely wrapped with Expel. I put it on there, it looks, it looks completely insane in person. So that is a big, oh yes. Can I put cream on it afterwards? Can you put other things on top of it? The answer is yes, you can do that. But a lot of people say that you, you shouldn't do that. And there is some grains of, of truth in there. So I'm not gonna um, push back on that at all. So what happens is because uh, when it, once it's on the car, we have such a, a low surface energy that uh, it, itself, it sheds. It does all these amazing, beautiful things, right? If you put something on top of it, then you take on the characteristics of whatever it is on top. So in fact, they, they are making sense. Can you put something on top? Yeah, it's totally cool. You can totally do that. But you are going to alter the characteristics of what's on there. Having said that, here's my little like, what, what is Larry talking about? I. I like, from a therapeutic perspective, when I go out to a show, I put stuff on top of the car, not just Reboot, because Reboot's gonna be coming up in a second to maintain it. I like to put stuff on there. I am secretly working on a new thing called Blush that is, a, uh, is like a cream, meaning it's like a wax, it's a smaller version of it, but it has all the derivatives, all the resins, all the things in it to help fortify. So it's like a, it's like a Reboot liquid, but it's in a wax form, why? I like waxing my car before I go to a car show or go out on a hot date or go do whatever it is that makes me excited. I like that. Having said that, it does leave behind a little bit of a, not greasy, but more of a sticky uh, substance. So when, in theory, when you're driving, uh, you're gonna lose a little bit of that self-cleansing uh, aspect because the surface uh, is a bit more sticky and you're not utilizing the low surface energy. Hopefully that makes sense. That's a long way of saying, yeah, you're gonna have a little bit of sticky stuff on your car that potentially could attract dust. I haven't seen it. And I think that applies to people who 
don't wash their car as often as maybe you and I do. So to me, it doesn't make any, it doesn't apply to me, but it makes total sense when, I, when you read it online. Don't put anything else on top of there. Okay, I, I see their point, but uh, I, I, I choose to go a different direction. You, you know, go any direction you want. How do I maintain it? You're gonna wash it with your microfiber towels. Don't use multiple buckets like we've been doing, just like we did here. Use your towel, you know, wipe it down. You will see that it's gonna act a little bit differently. And the reason that we use soap is soap we talked about the surface tension before with respect to water. The, the water has, you know, that when it turns into these beads, but when you put soap in the bucket, soap lowers that surface energy, meaning uh, it can be closer to the surface. It doesn't beat up is another way of saying it, it actually uh, touches the paint and that's what you use as lubrication to wipe it down. So when we put soap into water, it's actually lowering that surface tension, which is a good thing because you, you want it to not beat off when you're washing the car. Hopefully I'm not getting too crazy here, but um, so yeah, uh, you wash it like that, you dry it, you can dry it with hydrate if you want, totally cool, uh, and you can maintain it with Reboot. That is actually a derivative of this, and I just came out with it much earlier because I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to see how it worked and make sure we were good before we came out with the big, the big mama, which was uh, the Reflex Pro. Can I apply a second coat of Pro? The answer is yes, just wait until it's cured. Uh, I like to give it a full uh, 24 hours. You can probably squeeze it down, just do, do a little test and I'm sure you'll be fine if it's you know 10 hours in or whatever, a couple hours after it's uh, cross-linked, you should be fine. Uh, the last question kind of rolls into a whole thing here. And they say, hey, what is this white stuff on the bottom there? And that white stuff is an antimicrobial additive. So we have all the resins, all the things that make the product work just as great as, as it is right now. And then I said, okay, let's try, to, let's try to go out there. Let's go out on a limb and see if we can add in these antimicrobial products that basically once mixed and leveled down with all, this, all these testings, these uh, certificate uh, of analysis prove um, to 99.99% uh, that E. coli and staph are reduced by 99% uh, log three and log four over a 24 hour period. The moral of the story is, I wanted to focus on something that is relevant to, the, to today. We're focused on minimizing the amount of germs and bacteria for very obvious reasons. So I said, why not put our effort there? Maybe we strike out, I don't know. But right now I'm, I said, but I'm not just gonna like wing it and say, oh, maybe it does well, let's run it through these tests. When I was running it through these tests, I had access to all these chemists, these PhDs that literally do tests all day long. And I said to them, uh, what are some, like, what, what's going on here? Explain to me uh, the, the craze, what's going on with these additives, in particular, graphene. And I wanna be very clear here. I'm not pulling anyone's tail. Uh, I'm not trying to cause any issues. Uh, I don't want any negativity in any of these comments or anything. I'm just trying to understand even myself going forward. So from my perspective, I think graphene is um, a wonderful product, and I think there are gonna be these amazing benefits going down the road. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, maybe 10 years. I don't know, uh, but I think the product itself is amazing. But my question is, what about now? How, how is it really applied now? Uh, or uh, what's behind all of this? And uh, I'm gonna read you some statements that I've got, I've received from them. But you guys have asked, why did I not put graphene in there? The first kind of major thing that needs to be understood about additives are when, let's, I'm gonna speak directly about mine because I, again, I don't want any issues here, but this is a, is a coating with a my, antimicrobial additive to it. So it's a reflex with antimicrobial, right? It's not an antimicrobial coating. Likewise, graphene, and I, have, I wanna read a, sen a sentence in a second, is a coating with a graphene additive. It's not a graphene coating. Okay, so that's the first uh, number one uh, thing I wanted to bring up. And you guys have asked me, why did you not, I'm answering this question because why did you not add graphene? Why would you, why would you waste your time? Uh, <laughs> why would you waste your time adding uh, antimicrobial? 
So uh, that's the first reason why uh, uh, the first difference that, or the first point I wanted to make across here that, that, that get, they get across to understand that it's just an additive. Both mine and graphene are both additives, right? They're not the actual, it's not an antimicrobial coating and it's not a graphene coating. It's, it's a, the coating with antimicrobial or graphene. The second thing is uh, when you look at your car, you're touching the interior, you're touching the handle, you're touching the boats, uh, door jams, mold, all this kind of thing. I said, man, this would be really cool if we can minimize that, especially these door jams here. And of course, some interior parts that are painted plastic, you can actually paint those and you can coat them for your door handles. And if it minimizes even by the tiniest little percent, I would rather spend my mental energy focusing on that versus having something that's super strong, like we, in this example of uh, you know, the night outfit with the, with the policeman. I don't, I don't think that's the direction. I don't necessarily want something that's a piece of glass on top of my car. I want it to flex and bend. So why not go this direction? So that's my response to the, the few Facebook uh, questions of why the heck would you uh, spend your time and energy doing that? That's why I would do that. Now, the second thing was, uh, why did I not add graphene versus this other stuff? So that's question one, two. That was question two. The question three is, why not add graphene? So I'm about to reach down and uh, I have uh, some documents here that are blowing around the room that I want to read from various different chem chemists. And I want to be abundantly clear to looking you direct in the eyes. This has nothing to do with my wife, uh, uh, who is a PhD. She's in a completely different uh, category. And it's also a conflict of interest in my opinion. But so this is from, I did uh, multiple ones, but I'm going to give you uh, a little bit of what they're saying here. The first guy says, uh, the graphene should be viewed as an additive, we just talked about that, and not the coating itself. It wouldn't adhere by itself, so it must be part of a more typical ceramic coating. The more accurate, a more accurate name would be, quote, ceramic coating with graphene rather than graphene ceramic coating. Uh, likewise, keep in mind that graphene will make the mix dry slash cure faster than normal, so the users will really need to pay attention to the graphene powder. Next one, uh, during this process of me going through the testing and testing to make sure that I wasn't just saying, hey, it's antibacterial. I wanted to have something to prove it. Again, there'll be a download if you wanna really look into it. Um, I asked all these uh, people, uh, these chemists, these PhD chemists, a specific question. I said, can you explain what changes when you add or remove graphene from a product? My customers are asking, and I wanna be able to be intelligent and, and give them a real answer. His uh, response, quote, Graphene has fast become the buzzword of the year as the new marketing ploy to show that companies are bringing out something new to the market. From the research we have done on these so-called graphene coatings, companies are actually utilizing a graphite powder and simply mixing it into their existing coatings. This firstly changes the appearance of the coating to a darker appearance and allows the company to state that they have graphene additives in their coating or a graphene coating. In essence, graphene is just too thick in terms of microns to be left on the surface. And if it is to be filtered down and reduced in size, you are actually changing its form away from graphene and down to simply carbon black nanoparticles. A lot of products claim that it, is, it has increased hydrophobic properties. This is more than likely not caused by the graphene. And in fact, uh, the mixture without graphene particles added would be just as hydrophobic. The same applied with the hardness test. In, this same, in that, the same hardness would be seen in the coating without graphene as it would be seen with the graphene. Graphene is a real substance, do not get me wrong. And there will be applications move, uh, for it moving forward down the road. But however, at this stage in the technology, in small particle in thin film technology are the words that he used, it is simply a marketing term used to try to drum up business. It is not ready to be uh, used on the market. So that is uh, a couple of things. Again, I, I am way not trying to cause any issues, but you guys have asked, why did I not put graphene in there? The reason I didn't put graphene in this uh, or titanium or whatever the, the next uh, uh, the thing is, is we have to go through these testings. That's why it's taking me this long to come out with a coating. Think about the hundreds of coatings that are out there. Um, I, I don't have anybody behind me saying, you know, you, you got to push sales. You got to sell more golf balls and you got to sell more this and you got to sell more that. I don't, I, this just me. So I have the privilege to be able to take my time, do some studies and research, uh, bounce it off people I trust, and then hire other people out there uh, for this, you know, these, these tests or whatever to make sure that I'm not totally losing my mind. So these are the answers that I get back so you can understand why I would uh, sort of hesitate to put something in that uh, 
basically all of my advisors and people that I trust and bounce these ideas off of and try to do the math uh, are giving me the feedback that, hey, it's not quite ready yet. Uh, this isn't something that I think is a worthwhile pursuit. So as the CEO of Ammo, I gotta say, hey, uh, let's focus our time and energy on something that I think uh, I, I can prove. And again, I, you know, I can stand behind and say, yes, I think it's doing something. Is it the greatest thing since sliced bread? I'm not sure yet, but I wanna go in that direction. I wanna fail and I wanna succeed and I wanna fail again and I wanna sort of push the envelope there versus something that is potentially even stronger and harder and where I don't believe that that's something I want on my flexible paint. So that's kind of the backstory. I will say this, I cannot speak intelligently about all the other products that are out there in terms of the graphene and I cannot speak intelligently about uh, how uh, great or not they are. So take this with a grain of salt. I am no way uh, implying that uh, those are, are not wonderful products. I'm telling you based on the questions, if you asked, I'm answering your questions, but I'm in no way trying to put anyone else down. That is not my motif. That is not something that uh, I want anything to do with. And if it is, I'll take this video down. I don't I'm not trying to cause any issues. Maybe they figured something out that all these chemists haven't, and I'm not saying that in a jokey, snarky way. I, I sincerely am saying that I do think there is something amazing that's gonna happen at some point in the future, but ultimately, if you're using that product and you think that that product is working and their marketing matches what you believe and you're seeing it, then continue using it. That's totally uh, okay. I, my goal here was to talk to my customers and tell them why I am not using graphene. Doesn't mean I won't use it tomorrow or the next day or 10 years down the road, but it's not there in everything that I'm showing right now. I'm looking at the ground, I have paper everywhere. All the tests, all the things, all me banging my head against the wall has not shown that that is something that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to spend my very limited time focusing on right now. So hopefully that answers uh, a lot of your questions. I appreciate your guys' support. Of course, shoot me uh, some emails or whatever if you have more questions, I'm sure you will. But I think that covers most of it. Uh, we're gonna get more nerdy and more in depth about, uh, I'm really into the surface tension and surface energy kind of thing because I think it's pretty neat. But anyhow, you guys are great. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging in there if you did and be well.